We are back for day two of the $5,300 Borgata main event. We will lock up some money if we can make it to the end of day two, but our eyes are on the prize for that final table where we can take home a little over half a million dollars. And we're starting off the day close to a 100,000 chip stack. It's gonna be level nine. Blinds are gonna be 600, 1200 with a 1200 ante. And one of the first hands of day two, I'm gonna get dealt Jack 10 suited in small blind position. It's gonna fold around to my opponent in low jack. You're gonna be opening for 2500. High jack's gonna be putting in the call. It's gonna fold to button. They're gonna come along with the call. And I'm here with a really good suited Broadway hand. Would love if I can make it to a flop here. So I put in a call too. And big blind is gonna be laying it down. So it looks like we're gonna be going four ways to a flop of King Queen Nine Rainbow. Oh baby, we just flopped the Stone Cold <laughs> Nuts. What a way to start off day two. I couldn't believe it when it happened, but I love to see it. This could really build some momentum at the beginning of day two and allow me to coast throughout the rest of the session. And I am out of position here in small blind. I'm going to start out with a check. Low jazz going to check. High jazz going to check. We're down a button here. At my fingers crossed. Looking out the corner of my eye. Hoping and praying that they put in some kind of bet. Do not want to go to a turn here without building this pot. And I do get my wish. I see them grabbing their chips. They're going to be firing out a bet here. They make it 7,500 to go. This is a pretty massive bet compared to what's in the pot. There are not that many turns that I'm going to be worried about here, of course, with having the nuts. But my goal here is to stack my opponent. So we're going to start building it up here. I'm going to go for that check rizzle with the first hand of the day. And I'm going to be bumping it up all the way to 21,000. The original opener and low jack's going to fold. High jack folds as well. And button does go into the tank. I'm hoping that they at least want to see one more card after a half a minute or so they do decide to fold not what i wanted to see of course but hey i do manage to take down the pot and i'm gonna be up a little bit over 110,000 chips let's get it next hand i'm gonna get dealt pocket fours black fours to be exact in cutoff position gonna fold all the way around to me and cut off i'm gonna be finding that open here i make it 2800 to go goes around to my opponent in big blind they're gonna be putting in a call and keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, there is no recording at the Borgata. I do have all the hands that I've played. You will be able to see all the action on the overlay. If I do get into an all-in situation, I do have footage for it. Since you are allowed to record all-ins here at the Borgata. But thank you once again for being with me with the no footage. I appreciate it. And we're going to be going heads up to a flop of Jack 4-3 Rainbow. Oh, baby. We're at it again here. I just flopped second set on his board. My opponent should never have pocket jacks. I am just hoping they have some sort of pair in their hand, preferably a jack, so that when I start betting, I can build this pot up and get a bunch of chips from my opponent. They're gonna start out with a check here. And I think about my sizing for a little bit. I'm gonna put out a decent wager here. Not really too big though. I grab my chips, I make it 4,800 to go. Unfortunately, after a couple of seconds, they are gonna lay it down. So we've had two good flops in a row, but have not been able to build the pot up massively. Hey, my chips are increasing though, right? Next hand, I'm gonna get dealt Ace-5 suited, the spade variety. And under the gun is gonna be opening for 2,500 does fold around to me in low jack i'm gonna be finding that three bet here this time yes three bet in against under the gun and my view on this particular player was that they are a reg that is very important when you are choosing to three bet and when you are playing post swap against your opponent but yes i'm firing that three bet here i'm gonna be bumping it up all the way to nine thousand, and it does fold to my opponent in cutoff position and they start going into the tank then after 10 to 15 seconds, they ask, oh, how much did I start the hand with? I'm like, oh my gosh. So they might be thinking about four bet in here. Not fun, but I do let them see my stack and I just, you know, take my chips, whatever, show them that. I said, yeah, I pretty much have roughly the same stack as you, a little bit over 100,000. Because I did eyeball their stack and saw that that's what they had. And after me giving them the answer, 
of course, very confidently, as I sit here with my Ace-5 suited. <laughs> they do take another 10, 15 seconds, but they're going to be laying it down. And it does fold all the way around to the original opener and under the gun. They are going to be putting in a call. So we're going to be going heads up to a flop of Jack-10-6, Rainbow. Finally, I do not hit a flop today, right? Not much going for me here, but we do have a little bit of equity. There is one spade on the board, do have backdoor spades, and there is also a backdoor straight that I can hit. Queen and King can come on the turn and the river. And let's also keep in mind, I do have a weak kicker, but if an ace rolls off, I could still have the best hand. My opponent is going to be putting in the check, and yes, I am the three better pre and the aggressor here, so I'm still going to be firing out a bet it's gonna be a decent sized one this time i grab my chips and i put out a bet of thirteen thousand two hundred. they do think about it for a little bit maybe 10 seconds and they're gonna be laying it down so not only have i been able to win when i have a hand now this time i was able to win when i don't have a hand at all love to see it i'm gonna be up slightly over one hundred and twenty thousand, which is beautiful because that is the same stack that I had towards the end of day one before I had aces cracked. So you see, sometimes you just have to keep battling, can't get upset over one hand. You can always come back. You are never out until you are out, ladies and gentlemen. And still level nine here. We're gonna wake up with it. Ace King suited, the best drawing hand in poker as some love to call it. But hey, I just think it's a really good hand. Love when I get dealt it, especially in tournaments. It is way stronger in tournaments than in cash games. And yeah, I should know, right? I play both. So yeah, I'm going to be in under the gun position. Going to find an open, of course. I make it 2,700 to go. We're going to see a lot of folds, and it's going to make it all the way to small blind. They're going to be putting in a call, and big blind is going to be calling as well. So it looks like we're going to be going three ways to a flop of ace, nine, queen, two spades. No clubs on the board, but hey, we have top pair, best kicker. Not going to be behind to too much here. I'm feeling pretty good. We don't have any flush draw equity as there is no club on board, but that's fine. I'm feeling very confident about my holding here. Only hands I could think that I would be behind to are gonna be ace queen, ace nine, and of course, pocket nines. I don't really see any villain here having pocket queens. That would just be sick. And small blind's gonna be put in a check. Big blind puts in a check here. And definitely gonna be firing out a butt, of course. Do not want both villains to see a turn for free. So I grab my chips. I'm going to be putting out a bet here of 5,000. Small blind is going to be putting in the call. Big blind is going to be laying it down. We've thinned out the field. We're going to be going heads up to the turn. And it's going to come to six of hearts. Beautiful turn. Nothing should have changed with the six of hearts. If they floated pocket sixes, I mean, well, hey, what can you do? But I don't really see that happening. I'm just really happy that it is the six of hearts and not the six of spades. At this point, I believe I should still have the best hand. So I'm going to be putting in a check and I'm going to be finding that double barrel this time. Thinking about my size and for a bit here. And yes, I am going to be going for it. I am going to be finding that over bet. Yes, y'all know how I love to over bet. And even in this tournament, I am still going to be finding an over bet here. So I do grab my chips. I'm going to be making it a beautiful 24,000 to go. My opponent does go into the tank for a little bit. I guess they are a bit surprised at my sizing, but after about 20 seconds, they are going to be laying it down. Perfectly fine with that. I win another pot. My stack is now above 130,000. Looking pretty good here on day two at the Borgata. And we're going to be skipping a whole level here. Yes, the entire level 10 was completely trash nothing really happened in an hour so we're jumping in straight to level 11 after break and my stack is now going to be 103,000. so i did lose a little bit of chips but hey let's find that rebuild again blinds are now going to be 1000 2000 with a 2000 ante so now i'm sitting at 50 big blinds and i'm going to get dealt pocket nines and small blind it's going to fold to my opponent and hijack they're going to be finding a 2x open here they make it 4,000 to go Folds all the way around to me in small blind. I do start to look at my opponent's stack. Well, to be honest, I looked at their stack before and already saw that they were roughly in the 50 something thousand range, very close to 60,000. So they have about 29 to 30 big blinds to start. I'm thinking about my options here and after weighing some factors and looking at the opponent's stack in big blind, who I see I also have covered. 
We're going to be going for it. Y'all know what time it is. First one of the video, we're going to have an Aunt Jamama Moe. I am all in with pocket nines and small blind. Big blind is going to be snap folding. And the original opener, he is going to fold immediately as well. No complaints there. Just happy to not run into it. I will gladly take the blinds and annies and that two big blinds villain open. Now, I'm finally going to be playing a hand in big blind. I'm going to get dealt 9-7 suited, the diamond variety. Going to fold all the way to my opponent in hijack. They're going to find that 2x open. They make it 4,000 to go. Goes all the way to small blind. They're going to be putting in a call. And hey, definitely want to see a flop with this hole in. I flick in a call as well. So we're going to be going three ways to a flop of king jack jack, two diamonds. Decent flop here. I am drawing to a nine high flush draw. Don't have anything else going for me right now. Maybe we could see some good turns and be able to take this pot down at a later time. Long line is going to check. I'm going to check in big blind. The original pre-flop aggressor after a couple of seconds, they're going to be checking back. I mean, music to my ears. I get to see a free turn and realize my equity without having to put additional chips in a pot. Love to see it. So we're still going to be three-handed going to the turn and it's going to come the eight of spades. Now this turn is giving me additional equity. I am drawing to a straight with a 10 as well. Yes, that gives a queen a straight, but it's hard to get straight over straighted in poker. So not too worried about that. And small blind is going to be putting in a check. I'm going to be firing out a bet here. I make it 7,000 to go. Hijack's going to be laying it down. Small blind goes into the tank for a bit. And after 20 seconds, surprised they even took this long. We're just on a turn. But they're going to be laying it down. And they did tell me they hope I had it. And I pretty much said, yeah, 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 I had it. Yeah, yeah, I had it. Of course, of course I did. <laughs> but yeah, take it down with nothing. I didn't have a made hand yet. Way to go by me. And after this hand, we are going to be getting moved to a new table. And one of the first playable hands at the new table, I'm going to get dealt 9-8 suited on the button. And it's going to fold all the way around to me. I'm going to be finding that open here. I make it 4,500 to go. One line is going to fold. Big blind doesn't immediately put in the call. And after about 10 seconds, I see him doing something else. And this was an older gentleman at the table here. Looks like they're going to be three betting. And keep in mind, this is the second time they have three betted me at this table at this point. First time it felt strong. Second time it still feels strong. But hey, I have a hand that I can defend with. It's not the biggest three bet size with them making it 13,000 to go. And I have position here. So, hey, I'm going to defend. I put in a call. So, we're going to be going heads up to a flop of four, five, nine, two diamonds. So, an all right flop here. I do flop top here. Weakest kicker possible. And there are diamonds on the board and a club. No spades out there. But, hey, like I said, I have a pair. And I'm waiting to see what my opponent is going to do here. After a couple of seconds, they do announce it a dealer. They're going to be checking. And I do have top here on this board. Good check back sometimes but this time around i want to stab here in position in this three bet pot so i grab my chips i put out a small wager here i make it 7500 to go and after a couple of seconds they announce they're going to be raising not what i wanted to hear at all so they do decide to bump it up all the way to 20,000. rough spot here as this pot is building rather quickly at a decent amount of chips to start this hand but facing a three bet plus a check raise on the flop we are already extremely shallow here and at this point i do feel i am very behind in this hand but hey i have top here i can hit trips on the turn or i can even hit two pair on the turn and then i know for a fact 100 percent of the time i am going to be ahead so i am going to have to defend here i do take my chips and i put in a call and we're gonna go to the turn and it comes my lady the queen of spades not the best turn here of course I now have second best pair and honestly i didn't even feel like my hand was second best pair after getting check raised on a flop right but i am going to get a little bit lucky here when my opponent announces they're going to be checking on the turn i'm like oh great they're not firing again because if they did i would have been in a shit load of trouble so i think about my options here and i do elect to play the passive route let's see a river let's hope my hand can improve even more I check back and we go to the river and it comes the three of diamonds. 
Now I'm going to lose to any random flush draw my opponent checked raised on flop. I am hoping, praying that they check for some reason, but they're not gonna do that at all. I do see them grab some chips. They're gonna be firing out a bet here of 15,000. And I go into the tank. You all already know at home that this is not the biggest bet here, but I'm just like, okay, what do I even beat? Old man three better me, big bond versus button. Old man check raising me in a three bet pot, big bond versus button. Old man check and turn and then bed and river. I mean, just seems like I lose almost every time here. Looks like I'm getting odds to call, but am I really? I don't think so after my huge tank for maybe almost a minute yeah i really thought about this for a long time i decided to just lay it down and move on to the next hand i am now going to be down to roughly seventy-five thousand. all right at least after that nine eight hand we're finding some meat here i get dealt ace king offsuit and i'm going to be in a hijack position it's going to fold all the way around to me and i'm going to be finding that open here i make it 4500 to go Folds all the way around to my opponent in small blind and they're not calling 4500 no they're gonna be putting in that three bet and not only are they putting in that three bet they're doing it off of a relatively small stack here they did start out with roughly 50,000, so they're gonna be three betting and making it 12,000 to go and it does fold all the way around to me my opponent did start with 25 big blinds i mean easiest decision in america in the world so y'all already know what time it is. It's going to be not Jamama moment. I'm going to go all in, having my opponent covered. And trust me, if you're not going all in in a spot after facing a three bet, then yeah, I don't know what you're doing. You just have to get it in 100% of the time. If you ever thought different in tournament poker, stop thinking differently and just jam on a person that has 25 big blinds, ladies and gentlemen. And after I do jam, after a couple of seconds... They do angrily muck their cards. So I am going to scoop the pot there. Looks like they were putting in that three bet bluff. Or maybe they felt they can pick a better spot. I'm fine taking it down pre. No problem. Way to capture this W after that horrible three bet pot last hand. I've been doing well in this tournament so far already. And if you want to get better at MTTs, check out Poker Academy, the company I've been an ambassador with for almost two years. It has a pre-flop trainer that you can use for poker drills to improve in various spots of the game, whether you're on your computer or on your phone as well. The user interface is amazing and it is the biggest pre-flop database on the market right now. It has ICM for all stages of tournament play and also post-flop solutions. Poker Academy has truly taken my game to the next level I always try my best to only give support to sites that have truly helped improve my own game. You can use code BRANDONSLY for 10% off your subscription, and you can receive a free $10 if you do a monthly subscription, or a free $50 rebate from me if you do the yearly subscription. The site is going to be pinned to the video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, or you can contact me via Discord through direct message. And now let's get back to the action at the Bogata. Blinds are gonna be up now and my stack is not looking the best here. It's gonna be level 12, 1500 small blind, 2500 big blind and Annie, but I am gonna wake up with it. And big blind is gonna be a beautiful big blind special, pocket queens, the ladies, my favorite hand ever in poker. Been my favorite hand for years and years and years and many a damn year. Can't stress that enough. It's gonna fold all the way around to my opponent in hijack. They're gonna be finding that open here. They make it 4,000 to go. Button is gonna be putting in the three bet. They make it 16,000 to go. And it folds to me in big blind. And I did not look at my cards yet when this three bet happened. I do peel back. I see the ladies and I'm like, let's get it. I mean, this is it. I love the ladies. So y'all already know what time it is. It's gonna be an Aunt Jamama moment. I am all in. This time for my tournament life with the ladies. Hijack is going to be folding and button is going to be snap calling. And not only do they snap call, they also snap turn over their hand and they're going to show pocket fucking aces. And I'm just shaking my head like, damn, I mean, way to run into it. It sucks. I was hoping to be ahead here. We're going to have to find a lady to stay alive. We have footage of this. Let's go straight to the run out. Mm -hmm. 
Lady Club. Lady Club. Look, come on. Man. Go, baby. Let's fucking go. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Oh, yeah, it's big one. Are you, are you somebody famous? No. As you can see my excitement there, I could not believe that I spiked the queen on the river to save my life, my tournament life. This $5,300, biggest buy-in of 2024 so far. I managed to crack aces. This is why the ladies are my favorite hand. I always say, yeah, the equity shows 20%, 80%. But for me with ladies, it's like a 40, 60 spot. That's just how it is. And to make matters even crazier, the person in small blind said they folded a queen. They had no reason to say this information. Don't really see them lying about this. So that would mean I spiked a one outer to save my tournament life. And yeah, I can also hit a straight two, by the way. So it's not necessarily one out. And both of my suits were live for four card flushes. But hey, we do spike that queen. I mean, I am so happy. I am now going to be back up to a little bit over 130,000 chips. And we are now about 100 away from the money. Minimum cash is going to be roughly eight thousand dollars that would put me into green but hey we are still looking forward to making that big final table and chasing that half a million dollar prize and how do you feel back at home celebrating when you do hit that two out or a one out or against your opponent or if you win on the side with aces let me know how you feel about it in the comments below there's been a lot of controversy about this in poker some people show emotion some people don't show emotion I'm the kind of person that'll show emotion if I win. Sometimes I'll show emotion if I lose. And hey, I had my aces cracked in day one, right? That time I did not show much emotion though. It wasn't really anything crazy. But hey, let's get it and let's keep building. I did win that pot, but I still have some work to do. And next hand I'm gonna get dealt pocket eights, the snowman in under the gun position. Just so you know, pocket eights are my second favorite hand in poker ever. And they even won my biggest poker tournament ever online when i took down a 630 high roller and i'm going to be finding it open here i make it 5,000 to go goes all the way around to hijack this is going to be the same opponent i battled and that three bet pot with 98 suited they're going to be putting in a three bet again versus me and they're going to be bumping up all the way to 14,000. you're going to fold all the way back around to me and not going anywhere with pocket eight second favorite hand come on now let's see a flop dealer so i do take my chips and i'm going to be putting in a call so we're going to go heads up to a flop of 854, two spades. Oh, baby, what a sexy eight ball corner pocket. I have top set here on this board. Never see this old man having six, seven suited. That would be insane. I am just hoping they do have aces, kings, etc. And I am ready to play for stacks. I'm going to start out with a check. And after about 10 seconds in deep thought, they're going to be checking back. That's not what I wanted to see at all. Really would have loved if they put in a bet here. Now we got to go to the turn. And it's going to come to nine of spades. Not the turn that I want to see. Flushes are now there. And I do not have the eight of spades in my hand. But hey, I still have a second best set on the board. So I do think about my size in here for a little bit. And I grab my chips. I'm going to put out a massive one here. I do make it 32,500 to go. And my opponent does go into the tank here. They're tanking, they're tanking. And even a minute goes by, they still have not made a decision. But eventually they elect to fold and that's not really what I wanted. So maybe I bet a little bit too big and a smaller bet would have allowed them to call. But we never know what the river could have been. So I'm still happy with my sizing and everything like that. River could have came a spade and I would have been asked out. So sometimes you have to just be happy with taking out a pot, even though you don't get the maximum. We are catching some W's as we are approaching the money. And it's now going to be level 13 here at the Borgata. Blinds are going to be 1,500, 3,000. And I'm going to get dealt A7 suited the club variety in big blind position. Going to fold all the way to my opponent and hijack. They're going to be finding that open here. They make it 6,000 to go. Goes to me in big blind and I'm going to be putting in the call. So we're going to be going heads up to a flop of Jack 4 Deuce, Rainbow. 
Jack of clubs is on the flop, but I do have some backdoor equity there to run a runner club for the nut flush and aces and overcard to the board. And last but not least, I do have some backdoor equity to straights if a three and a five were to roll off. And not being a pre-flop progressor here, I'm going to start out with a check. After a couple of seconds, see my opponent grabs his chips. And he's going to be putting out a well-sized wager here. I was surprised at the size in here. But they're going to fire a massive bet of 10,000. This is gigantic. So gigantic. I did not call right away. It took me about 10, 15 seconds. And I'm like, okay, doing the math and everything, thinking about it. Can't just let this opponent run me over here. So this time I do opt to defend. I'm going to be putting in a call. And we're going to go to the turn and it comes to Jack of Hearts. Top card now is paired. I'm still going to be checking, of course. Looking to see what my opponent's going to do. And after about 10 seconds or so, they're going to be checking back. That's beautiful. My ace high could be good here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the river. And it's going to come the four of clubs. That's even better. Because now my ace high did have a weak kicker. But now that kicker is not going to matter. Two pay on the board. If my opponent does have ace high as well, we're just going to get the choppers. So let's see what happens. I do opt to check again. And villain's going to snap check back here. I let them know I have ace high and they mock their cards. So it looks like they were just trying to take down the pot with that massive size and on the flop. This is why sometimes I have to be willing to defend to these bigger sizes. You never know. You may just have the best hand. And next hand I'm going to get dealt. Jack 10 suited in undergun plus one position. And I'm going to be finding that open here. I make it 6,500 to go. And it's going to pull to my opponent on a button. They're going to be putting in that three bet here. They make it 15,000 to go. Pulls back around to me in under the gun. And yeah, not the craziest three bet. I already have two big ones invested. This is a strong three bet, however. But hey, Jack 10 suited is decent. It's not like we're on a money bubble or something like that. So hey, I'm going to be defending here. I want to play some poker. I'm going to be put it in the call. A lot of three bet pots today, right? Just so freaking many. But yeah, we're going to be going heads up to a flop up. King 9-6 rainbow. Very good flop here for a jack 10 suited. Do have some backdoor equity with the diamonds. But most of all, I am drawn to the stone cold nuts. If my lady were to roll off, that would give me the nuts straight. And even if a 7 and 8 rolls off, I will have the nuts straight again as well. And I'm going to be checking to my opponent. After about 10 seconds or so, looks like they're not finding a seabed here. They're going to be checking back. Beautiful. I get to see a turn for free. And we're going to go to it. And it comes the eight of clubs. Now I am open-ended to the stone cold nuts. Looking pretty good here. And I decide this time around, I'm going to be firing out a bet here. Maybe I can take it down here sometimes. If not, I'm just going to hit straight on the river, right? Come on now. So I do grab my chips. I'm going to put out a massive bet here. I make it 27,000 to go. And after a couple of seconds, yes, they have nothing to continue with. They're going to lay it down. Taking down another pot with nothing. I am winning on both sides of the spectrum. Let's keep it going. I am now up a little bit over 170,000. There are 171 players remaining and 87 are going to get paid. We are now on level 14 here. Lines are going to be 2,000, 4,000. My stack has unfortunately been dwindling a little bit. So I'm starting this hand with roughly 120,000 or 30 big blinds as we're about 60 away from the money at this point. And I'm going to get dealt queen five offsuit. Yes, queen five offsuit. I have a lady in my hand. Come on now. In big blind position. It's going to fold to my opponent in hijack. And they're going to announce to the dealer they're going to be all in for roughly six big blinds, 25,000 to be exact. And it does fold around to me in big blind. And I see my queen five off and I'm like, damn, I already have one big blind in. It's only five big blinds to call. But the problem with this is the villain who is jamming has been extremely tight at the table for the past couple of hours. Just haven't seen them get too out of line. They've always had it, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, damn, it would suck if I'm sharing a card with them. And even with my read, I still end up flicking in the call. So I'm like, you know what? If I'm live, I'm only risking five big blinds. Hopefully it's just like a 40, 60 spot, something like that. I believe it'll be worth it, but I'm not going to like the news when they turn over a queen offsuit. Yeah, I'm completely dominated. Would have loved if they didn't have my card in their hand, but hey, they can still jam some hands 
that would have just been roughly almost a coin flip or me having a 40 percent equity so hey what can you do we do have footage of this hand since it is an all in so let's go straight to the run out Brown deck's my good deck. I'm good with the brown deck. It's the blue deck that you know, doesn't work out for me. You know you're just you're doubling. Just do you. <laughs> and yeah, that really was not much of a sweat, right? I was only drawing live till five. Nothing was really going my way there. I am going to lose a decent amount of chips. And we are now only about 50 people away from the money. And this is going to be a very unique hand here. We are 40 away from the money now and finding that min cash. I'm gonna get dealt 10-7 suited in small blind position. And I am gonna be starting a hand with 22 big blinds, exactly 88.5K. And the reason that this hand is unique is big blind is sitting out. Yes, big blind must've went to use the bathroom, get food. I don't know what the hell they went to do, but they are not seated at the table. And it is gonna fold to my opponent in hijack they have a lot of chips at this table and they have been being aggressive and I see them open to 8,000 and it folds around to me in the small blind. Nobody else is in the hand. I already know that villain is trying to just steal the blinds because the person is sitting out. If I fold, they get everything for free. And because of this happening, yes, because of this unique scenario that really happens, I decide I'm going to treat small blind as big blind because yeah, that's what you should do in this situation. It is 1.5 big blinds to call instead of the one big blind when you're in big blind, but 10-7 suited is still a decent start in hand. But to be completely honest, I would have loved if I just had a hand that I could jam with here because I know majority of times my opponent is going to fold. 10-7 suited doesn't make that cutoff for three bed jam in here but yeah after that long explanation i am going to be putting in a call so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of three a six two diamonds now that's a pretty good flop for 10-7 suited i am drawing to the 10 high flush and i have some backdoor equity with straights as well a four and a five could come an eight and a nine can come so a lot of overall equity here, not being a pre-flop aggressor. I'm going to start out with a check and I see my opponent grab some chips. They're going to be putting out a bet here and make it 6,000 to go and just a small wager here. So I do think about my options. I could call or I can do something a little bit more risky and crazier. And once again, keep in mind, this person is chip leading the table and big blind was sitting out so i decide fuck it i'm gonna go for it i'm going for that check rizzle because i know my opponent is just gonna see bet everything here yes that's the read they're gonna see bet everything they're never gonna check back ever so i decide to go for that check rizzle here and i'm gonna be bumping it up all the way to twenty-two thousand. and my opponent does think about it for 10 to 15 seconds i'm just hoping that they fold but they're gonna be putting in a call so we're going to go to the turn and it comes the five of spades. Really good turn here. A four is going to give me a straight. I still have a 10 high flush draw. My heart is starting to race because there are two things happening here. One, if Big Mind was actually sitting in this seat, I would never have been in this situation in this tournament. And two, I know that I cannot check the turn here. So yes, you already know what time it is. It's going to be not Jamama moment. I am all in for my tournament life here on the turn with nothing, just 10 high. But I have some draws and my opponent goes into the tank and they start talking out loud here and they're like, damn, am I really going to call this? I'm like, damn it, they're considering a call, but I'm happy they didn't snap call because if they snap call, they just have an ace and we got to hit our hand. But yeah, they are tanking for a bit, so that is a good sign. I'm just hoping that they fold. And it did say out loud, damn, I don't want this to go on footage because I don't have the best hand here. So they are considering folding and they have seen me recording all ends. But I guess after deliberating for a bit, they decide they're going to be flicking in the call and they're going to be turning over three, two of spades. Insane here. Do you see how wide 
they open to steal that blind three two suited that's almost the worst hand i mean not the worst hand because like six two suited is worse but y'all get what i'm saying they were opening really wide my read was correct but now i am behind for my tournament life they have a pair and a flush draw four spades is going to be dead unfortunately i'm gonna have to find one of the three other fours in the deck or a diamond or even a seven or a ten is gonna take it down let's hope we can find it we have the footage of course so let's go straight to the run out <laughs> get you, baby I mean, there's a lucky turn for me. Otherwise, you win. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah, I would have to fold without that, but like, yeah. kind of thought that was going on. Before. I didn't know you had a flush card. Yeah, I turned, yeah. And just a very sad run out there. What can you do? I missed all of my outs. I'm going to get KO'd 40 away from the money. Hate to see it, but hey, that's MTT poker sometimes. And if you enjoyed this run and want to see future MTT vlogs, make sure you smash that sub button. I would greatly appreciate it. Overall, I am extremely happy how I played this $5,300 tournament at the Borgata. I played extremely well. I went for it in spots. And hey, had aces crack day one, but then crack aces day two. Usually in tournaments, you don't get to be on the other end of that quick. So yeah, really happy that I was able to do that. Unfortunately, I do come up a bit short here, but most of all, I am happy that when I do play these big buy-ins, these 3Ks, 5Ks, 10Ks, etc., I am always in the mix. I'm making day twos, making the money, playing some great poker. One day for sure, this year in 2024, it's going to be my time. And if you haven't seen part one of this amazing run at the Borgata, make sure you check it out right here.